Hello, welcome back to Mali Investment Talks, a series of talks where we discuss how to make your money work for you and to do so passively. My name is uh, Joseph Areu and today I would like to discuss or to continue with you the discussion of how to get long-term passive income. You remember that was the last topic that we were discussing, long-term passive income. That said, I hope up to this point you are doing a good job of investing consistently and affordably. I also hope that up to this point you have been able to identify and you are following your investment goals. So you remember we identified four main goals, short-term liquidity, long-term income, long-term growth, and long-term safety. And as I said, we are discussing long-term income. In our last discussion, we talked about bonds as a source of long-term income. Today, I want us to talk about shares as a source of long-term income. But before I do that, can I remind you please to always subscribe. When you watch my videos, always subscribe so that you will always be notified of all the posts, new videos that I will be recording on this important subject. So, we are talking about shares for passive income or shares as a source of long-term income. What is a share to start with? A share is basically a unit of ownership of a company. So you can, you can think of it as um, a currency of ownership, except that it is not legal tender but it's a unit of ownership. So when you own a company, you are talking about, or you always talk about the number of shares that you own in that company. People usually buy shares for two main reasons, two main objectives. The first one would be for long-term capital growth. That means, you spend a certain amount of money today to buy a share. Later, when you sell it, maybe several years later, you want to sell it at a profit. You want to get more from it than you spent buying it. Now, that is not the objective we are discussing today. We shall discuss that objective, long-term growth, in a subsequent session. Today we are going to talk about the second objective for which people tend to buy shares and that is to get long-term income, basically to get income, to earn an income. Now before I say anything or I say a lot more about shares, I would like to let it be known or to remind you that shares are risky investments. So the general risk level of investing in shares is high. There is a risk that you could lose your money. In fact, if you are the kind of person for whom losing 20 to 30 percent of the value of your investment would cause you problems, would give you high blood pressure, for example, would give you sleepless nights, then I would suggest to you that maybe shares is not exactly the right kind of investment you want to go into. However, if you get a good company, invest in a good company, usually for the long term, there is a potential for good returns from shares. So, in particular, once again, we are talking about getting or earning an income from shares. So how do you make an income?
from shares? What is the source of income from shares? Income from shares comes in terms of what we call dividends. So this is basically a distribution or a payment that the company makes periodically. It could be annually, it could be twice a year. The company makes a payment for each share that its shareholders have or own. Okay, so since it is an income, you would want to be sure about a few things before you buy a company's shares for purposes of dividends. Number one, you want to check how reliable are those dividends. What how, how reliable is it that the company will actually pay dividends? So please check. You can look at the company's records. You can look at the accounts. You can um, inquire how many times has this company paid dividends before. Because remember, you are using this as a source of income. Number two, you want to check. Many companies would have what we call a dividend policy. So, for instance, the policy might say that we shall not pay dividends for the, la for the next, say, five years, for example. If that's a policy of the company, then you should not be buying the company's shares if you are expecting a dividend. On the other hand, another company's policy might say we shall pay dividends to our shareholders maybe twice a year or they could say we shall distribute or pay the entire amount of money that we make in profits to our shareholders as dividends so you would want to acquaint yourself with the company's dividend policy so that you are comfortable that you are you will get the kind of income you are looking for thirdly you should get an idea, a rough idea, a rough estimate of the, what we call the yield, meaning out of or for every amount that you spend buying a share, what is rough, the rough percentage that will be paid to you as dividends. On average, in our part of the world, in East Africa, Companies would be paying something from 1 to about 10% in that range, depending on how they are performed, depending on um, the company's policies. But on, on average, I would put it more like 3 to 5% of the price of shares at the time they are paying the dividend. So that will help you to manage your expectations in terms of how much to expect in terms of dividends. The other point I want you to note is that dividends are not guaranteed. So just because you buy a company's shares doesn't mean that you will automatically be getting dividends. The decision to pay a dividend is the discretion of the board of directors. I need you to know one thing. Dividends are not guaranteed. That's very important. Just because you buy a company's shares does not mean that they are guaranteeing to pay you dividends every so often. Especially if the shares are of the type that we call ordinary shares. Now, we shall not go into the details of the different types of shares, but the types of shares I'm talking about are called ordinary shares. That category of shares does not guarantee anybody a dividend at any point in time. The payment, the decision to pay dividends is at the discretion of the board of directors upon the advice of management. So for any reason or for whatever reason that 
is important to the company, they could decide that this year we are unable to pay a dividend. Maybe we need to reinvest the money. It could be for regulatory reasons. All I'm saying is a dividend is not a guarantee. The board will also decide on the frequency of dividends. So they will decide whether they will pay one dividend in a year or uh, they can pay what we call um, a mid-term dividend, say after six months. All those are decisions for the board in consultation with management. In summary, as I end this particular session, I would like to advise you to always get some independent advice before you buy a company's shares, whether it is for dividends or for whatever other reason. Independent advice means you are talking to someone who does not have um, a conflict of interest or a particular interest in the shares or in the company whose dividends or rather whose shares you want to buy. So for instance, if you take advice from, uh, from your broker, that is not independent advice. I'm sorry. If you take advice from a marketing agent, say for an IPO, independent rather initial public offer, that is not independent advice. You would want to talk to an independent financial advisor, uh, talk to your lawyer or um, your accountant, someone who is knowledgeable about that sector, about that company, and they will advise you on the advisability, if you like, of purchasing shares from that company. Thank you very much. We shall continue the discussion of um, investing for growth in our next session. Thank you. Thank you.